All right, folks. So if you think about the, the richest people throughout the human civilization, some of the names that will come to mind could be uh, Mansa Musa. You have uh, obviously the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds. You have uh, Vladimir Putin, Elon Musk. But uh, here's the billion dollar question. Who was the first person to become a billionaire? Well, it's not uh, actually uh, who you think it is. So it is believed that uh, the first person in the world to actually become a billionaire was a Chinese orphan. He was born in the uh, Fujian province of China in the year of uh, 1769. He goes by the name of uh, Wu Bingjian, or more commonly by his uh, trade name as uh, Hao Kua. Hao Kua was able to become a billionaire in US dollars back in the early 1800s. So how is that even possible? This man, he has a very deep connection with uh, the United Kingdom and the United States. And uh, Hao Kua, he made his fortunes uh, mainly by selling tea to the British and also to the Americans while receiving uh, silver in exchange. Hao Kua worked as a uh, Gonghang merchant in the southern Chinese city of uh, Canton. It is known today as uh, Guangzhou. This is during the height of the uh, 13 factories. And uh, during this time period, uh, Western nations uh, such as uh, Spain, Denmark, Netherlands, Sweden, Great Britain, United States, along with many other countries. So uh, traders uh, and merchants from all of these uh, European countries, they all traveled uh, to this uh, special area in uh, southern China, which allows uh, free trade uh, with uh, Western nations. Now, an important uh, point to mention is that uh, during this time period, only a uh, man was allowed to travel to uh, the city of Canton in China. So uh, no Western woman was allowed. And the uh, interracial marriage between uh, Western man and Chinese woman was illegal. So all of these uh, Western traders, they all had to live in a, a small uh, designated area. So these merchants, they came to China to trade uh, for goods such as uh, tea, porcelain, silk. During this time period, so China was ruled uh, by the legendary emperor of uh, Qianlong. This is when China was the uh, number one country uh, in the world in terms of uh, GDP and also uh, in terms of uh, purchasing power parity. And uh, one of the uh, contributing factors uh, to China's uh, vast economic uh, growth was uh, their monopoly in uh, tea production during this time period. They wouldn't uh, take any kind of gold or any other forms of payment. The only payment uh, they accepted uh, from Westerners was uh, silver. Now let's uh, quickly shift location to uh, Cape Cod in uh, Massachusetts, United States. There's a man named uh, Warren Delano II. Why am I bringing up this name? Well, Warren Delano II, he's the grandfather of US President, yes, you guessed it, Franklin D. Roosevelt. So Mr. Uh, Warren Delano, he also traveled to Canton all the way from uh, Massachusetts in order to buy tea using a silver with uh, Mr. Hao Kua. He is estimated to have made over 20 million US dollars. Now adjusted for inflation 2024, that is roughly uh, 500 million US dollars in today's money. So yes, you can say that uh, Hao Kua uh, made uh, one uh, American uh, royalty family uh, extremely rich. And uh, Warren Delano II, he noted uh, during his uh, luxurious uh, dinners with Hao Kua while he was trading, while he lived in the city of Canton, and uh, this is written in his uh, personal journal. The journal is still intact today. So the dinner would consist of uh, 15 courses, which included uh, luxurious uh, items such as a uh, bird nest soup. This is like a Chinese delicacy. While also eating uh, shark fins, pigeons, duck, and uh, many other courses. And uh, the meal usually started at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, and it would last for over three hours. So what did uh, Hao Kua do with his uh, vast amount of wealth? That is a great question. Well, he invested huge sums of money into building uh, America and also Australia. He helped uh, to kickstart uh, their industrial revolution. Well, this obviously backfired. So he played a huge part in terms of uh, building uh, train tracks and opening factories in the uh, Western nations. There's a, a settlement on the east bank of uh, Lake uh, Eldon. This is in Australia. So it's roughly uh, 23 kilometers or uh, 14 miles from the Australian city of uh, Mansfield in Victoria. And uh, this settlement uh, is uh, named after Hao Kua as he has also contributed to the uh, Victorian gold rush. Mr. Hao Kua, he also uh, invested heavily in the uh, stocks. In his uh, American stock investments, 
This is a very, very early and ancient example of Chinese investment in America. So a portion of uh, Haokua's estate that remained uh, invested in the U.S. for decades under the direction of a future uh, railroad typhoon, John Forbes, is starting to see the connection. But uh, unfortunately, there was a major fire in the city of Canton in the year of 1822. The cause of this fire is still uh, unknown to this day. Nobody is 100% sure of what happened. Let's just say it was an accident. Although I think there was more going on. So vast amounts of uh, Haokua's silver was uh, melted and uh, it uh, poured out onto the streets. There were uh, many eyewitnesses reporting seeing so much silver that a river of silver formed in the city. And uh, this would flow into the South China Sea for days. And uh, in the end, uh, the British, uh, their uh, stock of silver was running extremely low. So uh, what would the British do to uh, trade for tea? They, one day uh, they woke up and uh, chose violence instead. Two British men, uh, one by the name of uh, William Jardin, another man, uh, James Matheson. So they flooded China with illegal opium from a uh, British Bengal. And also there's an American uh, merchant named uh, Thomas Perkins. And uh, he's from Boston, Massachusetts. He would uh, smuggle illegal uh, opium from Turkey. Millions of Chinese peasants would become addicted during China's uh, deadly opium crisis. This completely de devastated the country. So uh, in return, uh, in modern day uh, China-US relations, China is returning the favor by uh, flooding America with fentanyl through the uh, southern US-Mexico border. I believe that's called the Uno reverse move. Well, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. And uh, in an attempt to, to stop the opium flowing to China, which, by the way, it's illegal in China during this time period. It's still illegal today. So the Chinese troops, uh, they seized all of the illegal opium and they dumped them into the open sea while inviting uh, Western traders to come and watch the show as uh, the Chinese troops uh, dumped all these opium into the open water. This would really anger the British and uh, China would be punished severely. And I mean really, really severely. So this is the start of the uh, first uh, opium war. And uh, the Qing Dynasty China, they were no match for the mighty British Navy and their battleship, the Nemesis. So the city of Canton would be lost and uh, China was forced to sign the Treaty of Nanking. This is very significant. This is the start of uh, China's century of humiliation. I will cover this in a full documentary uh, coming up. And uh, this is when China became as the sick man of East Asia, or in Mandarin Chinese is known as uh, Dong Ya Bing Fu. So this treaty also ended the 13 factories in Canton and uh, this would hand uh, the city of uh, Hong Kong to the British. It, it would remain a British colony and during the Second Opium War, the Kowloon Peninsula would be added as a British colony and uh, it would remain under British control until the year of 1997. And uh, with China's loss during the First Opium War and uh, the Treaty of Nanking and uh, subsequently the Second Opium War, Haokua's empire would also collapse alongside the, with Qing Dynasty China. He passed away just one year after China's defeat in the First Opium War. His uh, descendants uh, are still very much alive and kicking in China today, but uh, all of his wealth uh, have disappeared. They were robbed by the British and the French. And uh, one more interesting fact. I will cover the Opium Wars in more detail, but uh, during the Second Opium War, this is uh, when the British and French, they would join forces to raid uh, the Chinese capital in the Forbidden City. 4,000 uh, British and uh, French troops, they burned down the old summer palace. This is uh, where the emperor sleeps. And as you can imagine, the humiliation that the, the Chinese suffered, this is the equivalent of imagining if the Chinese troops uh, started World War III with the United States and they made their way to Washington, D.C. and they burned down the White House and looted everything inside of it. This is what happened uh, to China. And uh, during the burning of the uh, Old Summer Palace, this is known in Chinese as uh, Huo Shao Yuan Ming Yuan. Over 300 eunuchs and uh, mates, uh, they were working uh, inside of the palace. They were burned alive by the European uh, soldiers. Also, billions of wealth were looted. The French uh, troops, they came home with so much silver. This would go on to change the French language as we know it. So in French today, money is known as argent, and uh, this also means silver. This is how much silver they uh, took from the uh, old summer palace in China during the Second Opium War. Quite an interesting piece of history there. So there you have it. This is the story of uh, the world's first uh, billionaire. Hao Kua came from an orphan background 
and uh, grew up in poverty. And uh, he went from this to trading with uh, American and British royalty, building uh, Western nations and uh, investing in foreign stocks. Some might say that uh, he's the Chinese Elon Musk. Oh, by the way, uh, Hao Kua, he was reported uh, to be around uh, 150 centimeters tall or uh, 4 foot 11. So uh, what's your excuse? Go out there, make some money, get rich and uh, get yourself a girlfriend that will brew some tea for you. Thank you guys for watching this video until the end. Happy Boxing Day. See you next time.